Welcome to my video on painting. I'm here to show you how I did this painting here, this still life from life. And what I did is I actually changed the background colors to look different than what it actually was in real life. Same with the pear and the grapes. Uh, I showed a luminescence um, coming from an invisible light source that didn't exist. I'm going to show you how I did that. Hey everybody, I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist. When I set up the still life, I knew I wanted to do something a little different. I knew that the background, uh, I didn't want it to look exactly how I was seeing it. I actually wanted to change it up. Now this is something as a beginning oil painter, I would not recommend. Uh, when you are painting from life, you should be painting exactly what you see. So do not, uh, try to paint your background a different color than what it is. Like if you have a blue background, don't go, well, I think it will look good in green and try to paint it green. Because what's going to happen is you're not going to know the true values of the color that you're not seeing. So you, when your background is, let's say, for example, it's blue, you can see the light blue areas, you can see the dark blue areas, and you can match your paint up accordingly based on what you're seeing. If you try to do that with a color you, you don't actually have in front of you, you are not going to match up, not just the colors, but the values. And that's where a lot of amateur artists, I think, get in trouble. And they try to do something from their imagination. When you're painting from life, you should paint exactly what you're seeing. Get that down first. Always paint what you see. Then, after you're good at painting what you see, then paint what you see up here. And, you know, that's the key, I think. Um, you know, you gotta take steps. So, with this, I knew that my background was relatively plain, and I wanted to, um, make it a bit more interesting. There was things I just wanted to do with this painting. I wanted to give everything like a glow. I wanted the bottle to glow. I wanted the pear to glow. I wanted the grapes to glow. I wanted everything to have like a, like it's almost, almost like everything in the painting had its own um, essence, if you will. Sort of like uh, each thing had its, uh, some sort of, um, you know, illumination coming from within it. That was what I wanted to do. I believe I accomplished it uh, based on how I painted this. So the background, um, I knew I wanted the the way it was lit. Um, I wanted the light hitting the objects uh, from the um, left hand side. So I set my lamp up on the left hand side but I didn't want my background to show the same kind of lighting as what the foreground was showing. For example, if you look at the picture down in the corner, the way my setup was actually in real life, you'll see that the whole left side of the background um, that my still life was set up against is bright. You know, um, I wanted that side to actually be dark and I wanted the bright side to be on the right hand side. So I knew I was gonna change that up. And um, uh, so I had to paint my uh, colors accordingly. And uh, so basically I was going to be putting in values that didn't exist in front of me. So it was just a matter of um, how best to accomplish this without too much difficulty. So I figured if I actually make like a like different values of background color and show like a step progression of that color, then maybe I could accomplish this a little bit better. So that's what I did. And uh, I, that was able to accomplish um, having the left hand side darker than the right hand side. And um, the Actually, the background color 
even though what you're looking at is uh, brownish um, in tone because it was just a uh, um, just a piece of cardboard actually is what I had behind my setup um, I uh, I did keep it those earthy tones so it's not too far off from what you're seeing but it is not exactly the same as what was in front of me I did change it to something I thought was more more aesthetically pleasing you know uh, it kind of gave gave the still life a, 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 a lot more interest and uh, so that's what I was doing um, so initially I set up my background I just used that is um, like a burnt um, uh, umber in the background because I knew I was going to stick with those earthy colors and I was going to use different variations of the burnt umber with um, yellows and white, the titanium white. And I was going to progress from the bottom of the shelf that they were sitting on up to the top. And I wanted it darker near the top and lighter near the bottom, but only on the one side. So I figured, well, I'll paint the bottle in first, and then I'll work on the pear and get those flowers set up. And I wanted to establish my focal point right away. And the focal point being that left side of the pear, uh, that uh, luminous uh, reflective light coming off the skin of that pear, that to me was the focal point. And then as a secondary focal point, I wanted to show uh, the light reflecting off the bottle, but I did want to give the bottle a little bit more interest. Um, it's actually a growler that I bought at um, a store called Country Max. I went in there looking for, I figured, you know, you know maybe uh, like they had some, um, I, I wasn't going to go with a bottle initially, I was looking for maybe a vase or, uh, or, or something along those lines, but then I saw this growler and I was like, that's a, uh, that's exactly what, what I'll, I'll use. So here you can see I'm putting in the lighter colors and I'm keeping the light, the lightest colors over to the right hand side. You can see I'm already starting to get darker in the uh, left hand side. And basically what I did is, like I said, I used like a step progression of different values of the same color. So I started with that burnt umber with some yellow mixed into it, and then less yellow, and then uh, eventually um, I started adding black into the color near the top. And I did the same thing on the right hand side, but more lighter colors. And near the bottom of the shelf, I used my brightest colors for the background. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here, I'm building those up, and um, so that gave the background more interest and it also caused the growler and the pear to almost stand out. Not like a cutout. I didn't want that. I didn't want it to stand like a cutout on top of, you know, a picture of a background. I did want my uh, growler and the pear to kind of belong with the background in the painting. So uh, I ended up losing those, uh, some of the edges of the top of the growler. So it kind of blends into the background. So they almost become one with each other. So I knew that was kind of important. And uh, yeah, you got, if, you're, if, you, if you really make some sharp edges on uh, the objects that you're painting, and uh, as opposed to your background, it will actually look like you took a pair of scissors and cut out a picture of your painting and then put it on top of a painting of a background and it gives that almost like a cutout effect. And so that's why you want to utilize your edges. You have your hard edges and your soft edges and you want some of your edges to actually disappear into your background. So your foreground and your background at some point, they kind of belong to each other. 
So I was, uh, I made sure I did that, and then the shelf itself was uh, relatively basic. Um, it was just black, so you can see I have some different variations of on the shelf. You got, I got, so, you know, where the where there's grooves on the uh, the molding that's going off along the, the front of the shelf. There's a, a, like a light gray, and then on the left hand side. It's almost like a, a black with um, yellow uh, mixed into it. So I was getting some reflective light um, coming off of the uh, objects that I set my still life on. And so I was getting some reflective light from that. And so that kind of gave that shelf a little bit of interest. I wanted to make sure I showed that. And I also wanted to make sure that the grapes that I painted um, had uh, luminosity about them so it looked like there was like a light glowing from somewhere behind the grapes and uh, so that was um, a little tricky only because normally when I do grapes as I've said in, in the past um, grapes I have like a love-hate relationship with grapes uh, sometimes they come out awesome and sometimes they don't come out at all they just look like like thumbprints on paint and uh, so I didn't want that to happen with this painting as you'll notice I only have like maybe a total of five grapes yep I took uh, actually um, removed a bunch of grapes off of the, the bunch and I just had those five grapes showing and kept it kind of sparse same thing with the flower I wanted uh, I had two flowers on the other side and then I didn't have that, initially I did not have that flower on the left hand side. I opted, um, before I started painting, I opted to add that flower on the left hand side just all by itself. Just to kind of give some, you know, just put something over there so it just wasn't so blank. Um, I don't know if that would have been a problem if, uh, if that was completely blank, but I, I believe it looks a lot better with that. With that flower on the left hand side and um, so that's one of the things when you're setting up your still life you should always play around with how your um, how your the objects are arranged you know what's showing you the, the, the best composition uh, for your painting so here I am adding some interest into the growler you can see I've got uh, the pear color mixed in there um, you can see the reflection of the pear and then I got the uh, reflection of the light. But then what I did do uh, that is not actually something you see on the growler in real life is those um, light areas like dust is laying on the top of the bottle. I suppose I could have got maybe, I don't know, some sawdust or something or just some yeah, you know, I'm not really sure how I could have made that look without, you know, using my imagination. How I could have done it in real life. I, I could have found something to put some sort of, well, maybe some baby powder. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe some baby powder I could have put on there to kind of give, give it that dusty look. Um, maybe next time I'll try that. Uh, but you'll see that I, I have um, uh, this dusty look on the top of the bottle. And I made the top and the bottom part of that growler very dark so that those dusty areas really popped out. And for those colors, um, it's not white, it's actually cerulean blue that I used. And um, I don't know if you'll really you can tell if it's, if it's blue or not. It almost looks white uh, based on the colors from the background. So here I am putting in that darker area on the bottom of the shelf. And you can see where I have the light gray up by the, uh, um, the grapes there. And then you'll see where I uh, change that color going to the left hand side. And I actually make the shelf vanish into the bottom portion of the painting. So there's no definitive uh, edge to that shelf on that side. And that's kind of uh, just the look I was going for. Like I said, I wanted my, I don't 
want my objects to be standing out. I wanted them to blend into the background that they were painted on. So that's one of the ways you can do that with your edges. So I just kept working back and forth. I did not blend those step progressions in the background um, where the uh, right you can see the different the different values where they hit each other. I didn't blend them. I purposely left them just the way you see it because I thought that showed a lot more interest. And I apologize for the uh, um, the grapes just almost like magically appeared painted there. I uh, neglected to turn the camera on and record that little part of the painting and uh, I didn't catch it till after I already put some of the color in the grapes. But I do go back and uh, for the grapes it's just, uh, that's quinacridone, quinacridone magenta and um, some asphaltum mixed in with that to give it that purplish uh, reddish purplish look and then the bottom of the grape is the quinacridone magenta mixed with titanium white and it gives it a really nice pink but it's almost like a like a luminous pink so it gives it that imp you know almost makes it look like there's some sort of light source coming somewhere from the right behind those grapes which doesn't actually exist in real life I wanted to give it that impression if you'll notice also on the pear, I have some sort of light source coming from the right hand side of the pear, the darker side of the pear, there's some sort of light source coming from behind it. So there's like a, almost like there's a light behind the shelf on the right hand side, like pointing upwards. Um, that was the effect I was trying to go for with that. And I, I feel I, I accomplished that very well. And, uh, you know, if I do say so myself but uh, I'll leave that uh, opinion up to you and um, you know as always if there's um, some you know if you like this painting uh, make sure you let me know uh, by leaving uh, some comments down below if there's any questions you have about my techniques or if there's something in particular you want me to do uh, make sure you put those down in the comments below I have no way of knowing um, what anybody's thinking about you know what I'm painting or or if they if there's something in particular they want me to do um, without any if you don't leave any comments below and let me know let me know so uh, yeah make sure you do that if you're not subscribed make sure you subscribe and definitely give the video a like even if you don't subscribe at least give it a like um, YouTube I believe the uh, the analytics is based on um, video engagement. So the more likes it gets, the more um, YouTube takes the video and then uh, shows it to more people. And that's the whole idea behind why I do these videos. Number one, um, I'm going to do this painting anyway, whether I'm showing it to anybody or not. But it's a way for me to get my artwork out to the public. So if putting a like on the video gets my artwork um, viewed by more people, then, then that's what I would appreciate if that's what you did. Uh, you're helping me out and then, um, you know, then at least I get an idea of what videos people like and what they don't like and I'll do more of that. So here you can see I'm putting that dust on the, that dust effect onto the bottle, giving it uh, you know, much more interest than just, than just, um, you know, it, it just makes it look old. And, um, and it looks white, but that is not, there is no white up there. It's all like a very light um, cerulean blue. And uh, so that's what I used for that color. And here I am putting that, that glow on those grapes. So, yep, um, I enjoyed uh, doing this. Um, uh, this particular painting is a 9 by 12 and I'll probably do um, another still life, very similar to this, but I'm going to use a, uh, a vase uh, that I bought at 
and I went to this store. It was uh, some place uh, like a like a home. It wasn't Home Depot. It was like a home warehouse or something. Or, yeah, I can't I can't think of the name of the store. Um, if I if I figure it out, I'll make sure I put it down in the in the uh, description below. Uh, but it's like a home something, and they have like aisles and aisles of glasses and vases and you know all kinds of things that you would use uh, that they're not expensive that you can use to set up in a still life and so that's where I picked up some vases and uh, you'll see those in upcoming videos of the still life that I'll be doing so yes uh, again appreciate you watching um, if you watch it to the end you know God bless you uh, uh, you know, I love you. I love you guys, and uh, I appreciate you watching my videos all the way to the end. Because uh, um, I know painting, uh, sometimes watching someone paint can be boring. Um, hopefully, me talking through the videos helps. Uh, if it does, let me know. If it doesn't, let me know that too. You know, and I'll just you know, cause I've seen a lot of videos out there of people doing paintings with no words whatsoever, no explanation, just music. Um, and they do have a lot of views, so obviously you, uh, people like to see that stuff. So yeah, uh, let me know one way or the other, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.